I'm Sarah Eisenberg, founder and publisher of Santa Cruz Tech Beat. Santa Cruz Tech Beat is the go-to source for all things tech in our region. You can learn more at santacruztechbeat.com. Today's program is all about the upcoming Hack UCSC 2016. This event is the region's largest hackathon, an event that's coming up the weekend of January 29th through 31st. Several local organizations are partnering to produce this hackathon, including UCSC Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, also known as CIED or SEED, the City of Santa Cruz Economic Development Department, and the Santa Cruz New Tech Meetup. Welcome to our three guests today from these three organizations. First up is Sue Carter. Sue is a professor of physics and the associate dean of graduate studies at UC Santa Cruz. She's also the director of UCSC's Center for, Entre for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, as I mentioned, often called SEED. Well, Sue, that sounds like three jobs rolled into one. <laughs> Among other things, SEED works with UC Santa Cruz faculty, students, alumni, and companies to identify promising areas of entrepreneurial development on and off campus. We'll learn more a bit later. Next, I'll introduce Bonnie Lipscomb. Bonnie is the Economic Development Director for the City of Santa Cruz. She's been with the city since 2007. Her professional background includes 15 years in local government working on public-private projects, most notably in Santa Cruz, including the Tannery Art Center, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary Exploration Center, the Riverwalk Apartments, and the Warriors Arena. Next we have Doug Erickson, a veteran of the tech industry. Doug's professional focus and expertise is in growing sales organizations, channels, and global expansion for tech companies. He has worked at companies such as Cisco WebEx and Sugar CRM, and he now works at Nanigans. For locals in our tech scene, Doug is known as the founder and main inspiration behind the Santa Cruz New Tech Meetup. This meetup has over 2,600 members and has been meeting each month since Doug founded it in 2008. Really, I think it's a must-attend networking event for locals in tech. So I'm going to start off with Doug and ask you some questions about the hackathon. You've been involved with Hack UCSC since the beginning. Please tell us what is a hackathon, how did it, the UCSC hackathon get started, and how is it different from other hackathons? Sure. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so a hackathon is where a group of uh, usually coders and developers come together over a short time period, two to three days, and, uh, and collaboratively work on hackathon or hack projects, coding projects. They'll create apps, they'll create websites, they'll, they'll, they get together and they, they create and innovate. And, uh, and this is something that we started uh, in Santa Cruz three years ago, um, uh, roughly two and a half years ago, uh, our first Hack UCSC. And uh, it was something that Brent Haddad, uh, Mark Adams, and I said, we got to have something like this. And it's, it's a great way to, uh, we thought, to connect the university with the community. So our first event was, uh, I think around 110 people, uh, and very successful. The next year, which was actually this year, January uh, 2015, uh, we had four times the amount, so increased to about 440 attendees. And, uh, and this year, coming up in January, we're expecting well over 600. And is it modeled after other hackathons, or is it different in some particular way? You know, it's. There, it's a, a lot of hackathons out there. There's, there's a lot of different ways of doing them, but basically it's all the same. Co the concept of the format framework is the same. Get together, you either bring an idea or project into the event, or you talk to other people and you learn about, uh, you, create a, you collaboratively create an event or uh -huh. a project right then and there. So who can participate? Do you have to be a UCSC student? No, in fact, uh, uh, we have 
students and non students from all around the u s participating you can be a high school from the high school you can be from we've had schools as far away as yale participate last year to people that are coming from mexico you can be a what we call a non student or a mentor somebody who just loves to get involved in in coding and technology and wants to connect with students so it's open basically to anyone who wants to participate whether they're a student or local or not and what does it cost for a participant well it's a one million dollars no it's a very good deal it's twenty five dollars for a student and forty dollars for a non student and the value there i must since i am in sales right yes is pretty much over two hundred dollars worth we include all the pizza and red bull and drinks that you can possibly eat over two and a half days plus a beautiful t shirt great is it the same color as last year that we haven't decided on the colors yet we're still working on different graphic designs and we've we're working through ninety nine designs to get entries on that will be women's sizes this year as well yes actually in twenty fifteen we did have the women's sizes but they were gone like that because we had over we had of the four hundred forty eighty women participate last year which was rocking good good so what are the categories of competition i think you have three maybe you could tell us about them sure the award categories are innovation which is very broad based create innovate and then we have tech cares which focuses on social entrepreneurship and that can be social benefits environmental and then we have labor tech which is a new sort of a new category this year that i think sue's going to tell us a little bit more about because she's connected with the department you want to tell us about the labor tech category yes the labor tech category category is sponsored by the workers lab and they're mainly mainly the idea behind that is to really empower working people particularly the working poor with innovation to improve their quality of life and increase their income actually and also also help with the fact that unions are starting to disappear how do you actually empower a group of people to to help and improve their working conditions in the absence of unions so that's basically the idea of the labor tech category we're going to have a couple categories in that but one of the one of them is going to be related to empowering Walmart workers oh called my Walmart so that's coming up and we'll list the details on our website there and then the other one's just a general category so anybody's trying to help people move into the labor community or improve labor conditions that's just one of the categories so tell us Doug what are the judges looking for we have a actually a third generation very sophisticated judge judging process now and we have categories of you know is this is this considered if you're in the innovation group category is this truly an innovation or are you just replicating something that's already out there we also have the judges take a look at is it feasible is it practical did you just design something that there's just absolutely no practical or real reality to the implication how it's actually used out in society and and then we we also just sort of take a look at it and say is there if any possible commercial viability to this so they look at all through all three sort of areas and then score the project teams accordingly so besides participants you also have a role for mentors or the hackathon also has a role for mentors and other volunteers so that the event will be successful you can't do it all by yourself so tell us what kind of mentors are you looking for and what kind of other volunteers are you looking for and add the URL let us know the URL where people can go if they're interested in volunteering sure so mentors are 
what we call non-students. Uh, so anybody from our community, tech community, who, uh, who might be interested in, um, in, in helping out or participating in a project or have an idea. Mm -hmm. you, can, you don't have to be a coder. You can come in and you can have a great idea. For example, um, in uh, th uh, the 2015, um, uh, O'Neill's came in with, with uh, uh, they, they had, they were using a uh, sort of a piece of paper to, for their students that go out on the Odyssey and they wanted to, an electronic version of it. So they came with the idea and sure enough, several teams created an app uh, over the two and a half days so that students could not only go out with their iPads on the Odyssey and not drop them overboard, but, um, and score what they're seeing out there, but now it all links to a website so when they go home, they can share their excitement. Mm -hmm. So that's a mentor. A mentor, non-students can participate, whether you're a coder, a graphic artist, uh, a business development, an ideas person, um, all of that's on our website, uh, www.hackucsc.com. And uh, as far as volunteers, um, we are overwhelmed right now with volunteers. We have more than 28 um, people that have volunteered, but we don't even know how we're going to use them yet. So um, we actually remove that from our website for now. Oh, okay. So if a person wants to participate, do they have to have a team together or can they arrive w yeah. by themselves or do they have to arrive with their team? Talk about that. What, what's that's a, the that's process? That's a great question. So a lot of people come with ideas already and, and, and people that they've been working with, they have teams that are put together. A team can be up to six people. Uh, but I would say more about 50% of our participants have never even been to a hackathon, don't have uh, pre-designed teams or ideas, and they just show up. And what happens in the first hour of the hackathon, the first hour to two hours, is everybody has a chance to go up on stage and for one minute to say, I have an idea. I want to build an app that will whatever. And I'm looking for uh, coders, or I'm only looking for somebody who's in graphic design, or whatever. And teams spontaneously form at the event. That sounds good. So you m you talked earlier about how the mentors don't have to be coders. How about um, this is a question I I hear a lot is do the participants have to be coders and what kind of things do participants who are not coders do on their teams? How do they contribute? Yeah. So uh, a mentor is someone who has interest and you know more senior level interest maybe or experience in anything from coding to app design, project management, uh, business experience, maybe vertical expertise in a particular, you know, in environmental studies or in labor or anything like that. And they come in and they can help the, pr the teams actually really refine what, what it is that they're building out there. And so you don't, again, you don't have to be a coder to participate. My question was more about the the participants, typically students, mm -hmm. what might they do on a team if they're not a coder? So yeah, uh, so a lot of the the student participants, uh -huh. because we have student participants and non-students yeah. who we call mentors as well, yeah. AKA, um, the students can also be just, uh, they can be coders, typically I'd say 80% are. A lot of them are not, a lot of them are focused on um, uh, again, on, on web design or graphics, or uh, they may have vertical expertise in, um, in hardware, um, and they're, they're looking for teams, or they may have ideas, but they need coders, mm -hmm. so they pitch their idea. So the event starts on a Friday, and it goes Saturday and Sunday. Could you give us a little overview of what is it that happens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Because I know that there's special opportunities on Friday to find your team and to meet your mentors. So maybe just talk about the process. Yes, at one o'clock we open the doors and we have, uh, if it's anything like this last one, about a half mile long of, of people registering, getting in and getting their shirts. And um, we have sponsors lined up to, with different projects and ideas uh, along the walls uh, to give them some, uh, where they can go and meet and, and talk about ideas. Um, 
We have keynote speakers at the very, uh, about two hours in who are uh, typically technology uh, legends. Um, I'm not gonna say just yet who that person is, uh, <laughs> but it's gonna be pretty cool. And, uh, and then, um, then there's the pitch. So again, one minute each for each project. Um, people can get up. That takes anywhere from an hour to two hours. And then the hacking begins. Uh, and for, uh, there's tons of pizza and tons of food, various foods there available. But over the next um, two days, there's, uh, you actually won't see a lot of the coders. They take off, they, they might be in their dorm rooms, they might, be, they might be camped out on the floor in the event but they're, they're just heavily working on, on their projects. And then roughly at one o'clock on Sunday, um, we, uh, we, the hacking stops, we take the projects, we have judges lined up, they put them through um, a uh, five minute judging um, for each team, there's three rounds, and eventually the top 10 are um, selected and they go to the awards dinner that starts roughly at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So what are the prizes? Wow, um, we have lots of prizes. We have over $80,000 in, in cash and prizes. And those include everything, again, from cash to um, things like uh, Rackspace is offering hosting, Nextspace, Cruise.io is offering free, um, or, or um, is offering uh, 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 slots within their um, co-working spaces. Um, uh, Santa Cruz Warriors offering lots of tickets to the, to the games. Um, and we have companies that are contributing products, so anything from Chromebooks to um, headsets to uh, any number of different things. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, I am going to move along. Should we mention Santa Cruz Community about offering? Oh, mm -hmm. and <laughs> yes. Thank you for yes. reminding me. So um, the Community Foundation, the community foundation is, yes. is also doing a wonderful thing to, uh, uh, they're contributing money which uh, the winners in uh, Tech Cares <coughs> will not only win a certain amount of prizes and money, but from the Community Foundation, they, um, there's money set aside to donate to specific community organizations within Santa Cruz. So they'll be able, it's a, it's a double win. Um, not only do the winners of the, of the project win, but some of the nonprofits in Santa Cruz will also win. Great, thank you, Doug. So I'm going to now turn to Sue and ask you some questions about SEED. Mm -hmm. So SEED is an organization at UC Santa Cruz. What is the mission of SEED? Wow, well, SEED's all about, our mission really is to inspire and train and empower uh, UCSD students um, to you know, solve challenges related to local and global issues. Yeah. So and is, does SEED serve beyond students, like faculty or community or that? Well, our focus is on students. We clearly have a big outreach to both mm -hmm. faculty, our staff have, uh, a lot of our staff want to be entrepreneurs and we work quite heavily with the community um, you know, a lot of the community serves as mentors for our students and gets very, very much involved with our, our student uh, companies that spin out of SEED. So what kinds of connections would SEED like to make for students in Santa Cruz, the Monterey Bay area and Silicon Valley and beyond? Oh, wow. Well, you, you know, SEED's very much a startup, which basically means that we operate like a startup mm -hmm. and we make a lot of mistakes and we do, we make a lot of good decisions also, but we're, we're highly dependent on collaborations with our community to basically identify who potential customers are, what our key resources are, who our partners should be. So for example, we need mentors for all our student teams. So, um, so anybody willing to, wanting to be a mentor for some young enthusiastic students with some great ideas, that's really great. Mm -hmm. We need, um, Internships, our students can't learn what they need to know uh, to basically transition their ideas uh, into a sustainable business through being just in an academic world. So mm -hmm. they really need to work with um, companies and uh, 
uh, organizations in the community that can teach them a lot of the skill sets they need. So we really need internships. We need uh, instructors who can help us teach our professional workshops. So we need one offer workshops that introduce uh, students to uh, ways to raise funding for their ideas, um, uh, professional communication for their students, how to handle uh, legal issues like uh, like IP and, and, and incorporation, et cetera. So any people wanting help on that is great. So how is SEED connected to Hack UCSC? Uh, SEED's basically a partner. Uh, Doug and Mark and I talk quite a bit. It's spelled Sonia's not here, but Sonia's also a key part of this equation also. Uh -huh. um, and we really handle everything from the UC Santa Cruz side. Um, so that involves helping to raise funding. Mm -hmm. Uh, really uh, making sure that our facilities are, are, we get the best facilities we can for the hackathon on campus and that uh, we make sure we have the best services that UCSC can offer to the hackathon, whether uh -huh. it's IT or, or catering or other services. Um, we also help to drum up student volunteers and participants for the hackathon, uh -huh. um, provide mental support. What else do we do, Doug? <laughs> Um, You're there for us. <laughs> we're, I, I, we're there, for us. there that's, for us. That's, yeah. that's it. Um, so give us the URL for SEED if people URL want to learn more. URL is SEED. It's CIED.UCSC.EDU. So please check us out. And if you want to be on our mailing list, send an email to CIED.UCSC.EDU and they'll tell us about all our great events coming up. Great. Thank you, Sue. So I'm going to turn to Bonnie now and find out more about what the Santa Cruz Economic Development Department is and who is it a resource for? Well, we're a, a department at the city and um, we're a resource for local businesses and anyone who works pretty much or, or lives in Santa Cruz. Primarily, we work on um, business attraction and retention, but we also have major projects, infrastructure projects. So we work on um, developing housing from affordable housing to moderate housing. We run the city's public art program uh, asset management program, and we we primarily work on making the quality of life better in Santa Cruz and improving the local economy. And so we do that through uh, assisting and financing um, various programs that assist businesses in Santa Cruz. Great. So something happened recently in City Council. That's right. Related to fiber. Tell us what happened. Yeah. So that was the Santa Cruz Fiber Project, and on December eighth, Council approved unanimously um, bringing fiber to the home um, throughout Santa Cruz. And so. What's really special about this project and really unique in the country at this point is this will be a citywide infrastructure project. This will be a community-owned utility um, which will pass by every parcel in Santa Cruz. So we'll be actually um, putting fiber in the ground, um, a gigabit of fiber throughout Santa Cruz. And we're partnering um, with Cruzeo, a local internet service provider who is going to be the operator of the citywide network, but it will be a community-owned utility. And we're, we, it's, Basically what it means is, is we're gonna have really fast internet um, mm -hmm. throughout the city. And with the future of work, uh, we really are excited to bring this to Santa Cruz because it just makes everything possible. And it's going to really help level the playing field. You know, we sometimes um, get asked, you know, what, what are the biggest sort of challenges to being a business in Santa Cruz? And I think historically a lot of it has been sort of our physical location and challenge. but. I think with technology, it's really helping us uh, sort of pass through those barriers. Mm -hmm. And with work changing, being able to work from home, having that flexibility um, really is, is, is an opportunity and we're really excited to be a part of that. Great, so what benefit does the hackathon bring to Santa Cruz as a community and what, why is your department supporting Hack UCSC? I, I Definitely for a variety of reasons. I think when Doug came to me a few years ago, at first when he was starting um, the, ha the hackathon, the, the prospect of really bridging between the university and the community is really important. And so the fact that it was focused in the tech area, which is one of the nine industry clusters that we focus on at the city, um, was it just, it, it fit perfectly with sort of our mission of really bridging technology transfer and bringing students that are working in the fields of technology and bringing them out to the larger community, introducing them to businesses in the community that might also be you know, able to take an internship or mm -hmm. um, showing that you know, once you graduate that there are actually you know, over 500 tech companies here in Santa Cruz. There could be jobs waiting for them here in Santa Cruz. So 
you know, right from the very beginning, I saw the possibilities of partnering, and we're always looking for ways to engage um, with the university and bring that sort of community that you have up on campus and really broadening that to the wider business community as well. In general, what do you see as key factors in helping tech businesses start and thrive in our area? I, you know, I think it's a lot of it's about connectivity. You know, it's about um, really providing um, that quality of life and that connection to your environment. We have a, a project called Santa Cruz Works that really works on connecting people to jobs in Santa Cruz. And I think that's a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. So what is the URL to your department if people want to learn more? Uh, thank you. It's choosesantacruz.com. And um, we have a lot of resources, financial resources, business assistance. So we hope that um, we, you can visit our, west, wet, our website and see some of the videos we have and learn about sort of how work and culture converge in Santa Cruz. And it's a new website. It is. And Maybe. with a local pr a business provider uh -huh. designed by Cosmic, and we're really excited about it. Great. It's lovely. So our program today discussed the upcoming UCSC Hackathon, and it's coming up in January, the 29th through the 31st. I'd like to thank my guest, Sue Carter, Director of the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at UC Santa Cruz, Bonnie Lipscomb, Economic Development Director for the City of Santa Cruz, and Doug Erickson, a tech veteran and founder of the Santa Cruz New Tech Meetup. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you at Hack UCSC 2016.